Hi, Mark. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well. So your award-winning thesis film is now long finished. Your daughter is a bit older now. So how is your sleeping going? <laughs> it's it's been going better, but you know this this past year has been so crazy that it's not helping. Um, but yeah, the the days I do get good sleep, the better I am. That's for sure. Right, right. So we're here to talk about your movie Awake, which is now trending on Netflix. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so for those that don't know, tell them a little about Awake. Well, um, it is a kind of, I would call it a grounded sci-fi film where uh, this event happens and because of it, uh, nobody can fall asleep and simultaneously all electronics are, are cut off. And it's about this mother, um, uh, mother of two who is, uh, whose daughter happens to be one of the only people in the world who can sleep and because of that she's some sort of outlier and she's on this adventure to kind of save her children try to figure out what's going on and uh, don't want to spoil it but that's the kind of just it. so tell me how you came up with the idea and the themes you wanted to incorporate um reflection of i guess uh you know becoming a parent was definitely part of it and and you know, what would you go through to protect your, your children? Um, you know, that was kind of one of the, the genesis of it. And um, I guess, you know, there was um, a lot of like looking around at, you know, the way the world's kind of changed in let's say the past 20 years and some of the things that, you know, the, the difficulties and the effects and the burdens that are put upon us. And I had this idea of like, um, I always had this idea of like this kind of reset or starting over, you know, what that would look like. And so ultimately it was, uh, mul many things went into it, what this film is about. But for me, it's about, you know, um, the, the um, you know, the importance of like getting down to the basics in life, which is, you know, especially when you're a parent, their survival just depends on you when your kids are young, there's nothing to do about that. And, you know, I think sometimes we get caught up in the world and we just need to go down to the basics of what life is really about. And that, so the story is kind of like an allegory for that, that journey, that kind of spiritual journey. Um, and then of course, there's, there's this Sophie's choice uh, element where, you know, one, one kid can sleep, the other one can't. Right. What do you do? Do you sacrifice one to save the other potentially, or do you sacrifice the other to save, you know, so that was also a very interesting element. Right. So tell me about some of your cinematic influences, obviously Children of Men, obviously you love Annihilation, judging by the casting of Gina Rodriguez and Jennifer <laughs> Jason Lee. So tell me about some of your other uh, influences, cinematic or otherwise. I mean, yeah, my cinematic influences are wide ranging. I think I fell in love with film uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so, you know, obviously like the, the, the stalwarts of cinema at that time, uh, Martin Scorsese and, and, and his films were huge. You know, I remember, was, I think the movie Seven was one of the reasons I wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the way that um, those things I'd never seen before, like the opening and closing credits alone were so disturbing and so disorienting. And I'd never seen, you know, someone take the media to that, push it to that realm. Um, I, you mentioned Children of Men. I've always loved Quran and, and you know, it, also, as I get older, I've been discovering older filmmakers. There's a filmmaker out of France uh, in the 60s and 70s, Robert Bresson, mm -hmm. who I think just has this amazing impact on the audiences watching their films through this very simplistic yet um, accurate, proper camera placement. So a lot of different influences. Mm. And I can help but notice your poster for your own film next to you, Copenhagen, yeah. right? Is <laughs> that what it fun. is? Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I have, uh, have my poster. I haven't got the awake one yet, but it's coming. But uh, you know, that film was uh, a lot of fun. It was we made it for dirt cheap, under under two hundred thousand dollars, and it kind of um, you know launched my career. And it's something that's dear to me. So I have the poster. That's the one I have closest to me <laughs> in my room. I love it. So tell me about some of your research into sleep and sleep patterns. What are things that surprised you? 
Um, yeah, so a lot of research, I, I did a lot of research and one thing that, um, like a couple cool things was one, I learned that when you sleep, you have this like a uh, cerebral fluid that we have in our brain actually like cleans the brain, cleans your brain as you sleep. So, so it's kind of this integral thing that process that happens. And, um, and then when you don't sleep, it puts pressure on your brain. It builds up and puts pressure on your brain, which makes you kind of start thinking and getting disoriented. And then, so that's one that was really, really cool. And the other thing is that even people who don't sleep like today, like they say the world record for not sleeping is 11 days, but that's actually wow. inaccurate <laughs> um, because our body, our, like just the way the human system works is that it forces you, it, it will force your brain yourself to go to sleep. So it might happen in like 30 second intervals, but it's something called micro sleeps that, you know, people with insomnia take where, you know, you blink and it's an hour later, but you don't feel it, whatever. Um, so in our film, we don't have micro sleeps. So that's why everything is kind of accelerated. And that's where we got away with the time. Right, amazing. So is it true that Barry Pepper didn't sleep or tried to not sleep for a week in order to prepare for his part? <laughs> is that true? Yeah, that's true. I could, uh, well, I don't know if Barry, you know, Barry necessarily would share stuff like that, but I definitely <laughs> could see it was happening. And then, you know, we got to his big, uh, unfortunately, uh, and if I would have known he was going to do this, I would have scheduled things maybe a little bit differently. But his big kind of <laughs> monologue was on the last half of the last day that he was <laughs> that he was with us, and I could see that. Oh my God, he was uh, he was tired. Yeah, it was it was interesting, and he's great. I love I love Barry, and just you know that approach is so awesome. Yeah. So tell me about some of your other favorite memories or moments from filming or downtime. Yeah, I mean, I think. I also think Jennifer did, Did I mean, again, these people, they would not, uh, they don't come out and share it, but I, I, I have a suspicion Jennifer also did some method acting in this. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, honestly, overall, the, the film was uh, great fun. You know, Ariana Greenblatt and Lucius Horace, uh, we had kids, you know, on set. I'd never really done a movie with kids on set. and. And with Gina and uh, Shamir, and we all kind of became this big family. And we, every day going to set was just filled with smiles and laughter. And you would never tell from watching the movie <laughs> that behind the scenes, <laughs> it was really actually like a really light and familial and fun atmosphere. And we, we all had a blast. Yeah, so tell me about some of the casting. Shamir, I thought, I've never seen him in a role like this before. He brings so much to it. Yeah, Shamir was some, it was interesting. Like um, when I saw him, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I follow intuition a lot. I know that uh, that, that uh, is not in vogue these days or whatever, <laughs> but you know, gut feeling's a real thing for me. And when I saw when I saw Shamir's audition tape, even though it was very different than what I was expecting from the character Dodge. And even though that's not what he ended up doing in the film, it, it, it moved me like internally, I had this like visceral reaction. And uh, I thought, I, and I had to meet him and talk to him. And we sat down and we talked about the character and, and all our ideas were right on page where he came from, what he did, why he was in jail, um, all this stuff. And, and we just hit it off. And I'm, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, he decided to be a part of this because I think he's fantastic and, and he brings something completely different to the film. Yeah. So has that gut instinct, that director's intuition hit you on your other films as well? Yeah, it did. I remember in, uh, I remember in, in um, Copenhagen, actually, uh, Frederica, the lead there, um, she came into the audition completely unprepared, didn't have any of her lines down, was kind of all over the place. But there was something about her that just like, I, I felt it again, just in my stomach, like, oh my God, this is perfect she, you know um and she was shocked when I kind of called her back and said like let's let's talk again but yeah she was great for it so I do try to follow it as much as I can because it, it you know there is something that speaks to you you should listen yeah so my colleague wants to know if you're a Game of Thrones fan because you worked several times with Geth and Anthony and now you have Finn Jones was that yeah. just a coincidence so yes coincidence yes I'm a Game of Thrones fan and actually, I've become good friends with George R. R. Martin over the past uh, <laughs> five, six years. I've um, gone to visit him in, in New Mexico quite a few times and showed my films there. 
And actually I'm doing a collaboration with one of his books for um, hopefully my next film. So love Game of Thrones, love George. Um, and yeah, and Gethin, Gethin and, and also funny enough, Gethin and Finn are really good friends. And oh, I really? wanted, Gethin, yeah. Um, and I wanted Gethin to be in, in, um, in Awake as well, because we, we, we're, we're, good, we're good friends. And, uh, but his schedule just didn't allow for it. Oh, so you have a knack of really casting rising stars at the time with Jason Sudeikis and Elizabeth Olsen, and now Ariana Greenblatt, who now can be seen in, in The Heights this week as well. So what did you like best about working with her and, and who do you work with for casting? Um, so I work with different people for casting and, you know, it, I don't know, it's all like, and I also, you know, I would include uh, Shamir and I think Shamir yes. is going to be a big actor as well. So um, it's always a sense of pride for me when I take a chance on these actors, I mean, you know, take a chance on these actors in different roles and, um, and, and they go on to have success. Uh, Ariana, she blew me away in her audition tape. Um, I knew instantaneously uh, it had to be her. The, pro the, the little bit of the issue was that the script was written for a, a much younger um, Matilda, a few years younger, oh. like younger, more vulnerable. But I quickly came to terms that we have to make this script work for her because she's so great and uh, such a professional, so, so dedicated, like the sky's the limit for her. Uh, I, I, I would affectionately refer to her as the future of cinema. <laughs> So I think she's, I really think, she, I really think she's going to be, uh, you know, we'll all be talking about her for many years to come. Yeah, I agree. So what are some of the moments in the film that you feel most proud of? Um, there, there's some, I think like, you know, strictly from a technical aspect, there's some really challenging um, sequences in the film, uh, technically challenging sequences in the film that were very important to me because as I was trying to tell this story, I really wanted to um, have our audience, you know, be be with the, almost like with the characters at all times. I wanted to feel very, to, to evolve into a cinematic style that was almost like docu style, the camera, mm -hmm. you know, with them the whole time to really feel the agony, feel the lack of sleep, feel the threat. So we did a couple sequences that were in the car uh, where, where the camera kind of stayed in the car with them as like stuff was happening. Um, early in the film and later in the film. And those were just incredibly technically challenging. So being able to pull them off successfully is, you know, a sense of pride. Um, and then overall, just, you know, I, I love that. Um, I feel like the actors, all, all, the entire cast did like a great job and really went for it. And I'm happy that they, you know, had the space to do that and they felt confident and everyone was just kind of happy coming to work every day. Yeah, and finally, what have you been watching lately? <laughs> Well, it's kind of funny because I, I definitely have not been watching movies like Awake. <laughs> um, I just, you know, this, this past year has been tough. I'm in, I'm, in, uh, I'm in Canada as well, I'm in Toronto. So yeah. it's, you know, it's different than a lot of my friends in the US have kind of are a different place, but we've been very restricted, very locked down. So I've been trying to watch more comedies and lighter fare and, you know, just try to, to get my spirits up, but it, I, I see that uh, we're turning a corner, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, something's reopening today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for your time, Mark. Thank you for your art. I really appreciate it. Thank Have you. an amazing day. Thank you.